few can go to Japan in springtime and not be enthralled by the cherry blossom which flourishes in abundance and few cannot fail to admire a progressive country at the forefront of technological development. Hiromi Abe knows a different, more painful side to life here, which is not progressive nor seasonal. She is a victim of domestic violence, one of a number of women who are increasingly seeking protection. A few years ago, that could never have happened in a male-dominated society where spousal abuse was once taken for granted. A friend of mine told me that these things are common and happen quite often. The police told me that even if I sought help from public services, they will not take the issue seriously, and I was afraid of the consequences if he found out that I was doing this. Sometimes her daughter witnessed the beatings which spanned two years until Haromi could take no more and went to the police. More are following her. According to official figures, last year, 25,000 women reported they were violently beaten by their partners, an increase of 20%. It's said that one in three Japanese women have been physically assaulted in their relationship and one in 20 feared for their lives. For four years from the age of 20, Sashi Nakajima was brutally beaten by her partner. Many times she thought she was going to die. Things that were happening in my life, I had only seen in movies, the horror kind of movies, and that is happening in real life, and I thought, it's happening to me, but I still can't believe that it's happening to me. If I can't believe it, nobody's going to believe me, so I kept it to myself. There are 150 shelters for battered women throughout Japan, often hidden away in back streets with no signs, no indication as to what they are. There's hardly enough to cope with the growing demand. Shelter staff and women are terrified to speak out, and there have been many cases in the past of violent husbands attacking not only their spouses, but also shelter staff, sometimes with weapons. A number of help centres for victims which try and educate women about their rights and men about the wrongs. This one, AWARE, deals with the abusers who attend courses to try and bring the violence under control. They believe that they can use their power to control their girlfriends and wives, and therefore they can be abusive. They tend to think that they can do things to their girlfriends or wives which they cannot do to others. They think that as long as there is love, violence is permissive, just as the parents are forgiven for slapping their children for the reason of teaching them how to behave. That's exactly how this man felt. He's too embarrassed to be identified, but he regularly beat his wife, he admits, for the smallest of reasons. He says although he can never rule out ever again using violence, he has embraced important lessons. About being equal in the relationship and listening to the other. I think I was only imposing my opinion, but I was not listening to her and I had not thought about her feelings. But now I think about what she is trying to say and why she is saying them. But it appears few violent husbands feel the same. To get around the law, some are changing their tactics from physical to mental and sexual abuse. And women's organizations believe that in this first world country, many women will remain as second class citizens for the foreseeable future. Tony Bertley. Al Jazeera, Tokyo.